So you want to learn more about clay. We're going to break it down and start from the very basics. Number one, tools and materials. You're going to need clay and there's different types of clay, namely oven baked polymer clay and air dry clay. I use oven baked polymer clay, so I'll be speaking to that more. There are different brands of clay, and if you're just starting out, I recommend using pretty much any brand that's available to you in your local craft shop. If I had to recommend one, Sculpey's a pretty good place to start. There's Sculpey, Primo, Fimo, um, Craft Smart. I think the biggest difference between these clays is their texture and how firm they are. I store my clay in a container like this just because I have so many. When I store the clay away, I either keep them in their original clay packaging or I might put them in saran wrap, but I found that over time, for some reason the polymer clay causes the saran wrap to become a little bit disintegrated and it gets kind of soft and gooey. So sometimes I'll use aluminum tin foil. The only downside being that the tin foil is not transparent so you can't see through it. So for clay shaping tools, you can pretty much get any set at your local craft store or online. I actually happen to have a cake decorating tool set because that's what my aunt gave me many, many years ago and it just happens to work. You're going to naturally gravitate towards whatever tools work best for you. The tools I happen to use a lot are straight edge tools like this, a fine tip needle-like tool, and then a slightly more blunt needle-like tool. Optional tools are rolling pins or pasta makers, especially if you want to work with more flat 2D clay projects. Prepping and mixing clay. I know some artists craft their clay pieces in one uniform color. However, I personally like to use colored clay. So if you're wondering what basic colors you should start off with, I would recommend getting black and white clay and the three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. With these colors, you can mix them to get pretty much most other colors. In order to do that, you need to know some mixing techniques. Now, there are two techniques that I am aware of. One, I'll call the smush technique. It's simply smushing the colors together until it blends into its final form. For me, I do something called the twist and roll. I'll have two or more colors of clay, I'll roll them out and then twist them together and then roll it and then twist it again. For me, this makes the blending process much faster. For me personally, the best tools for smoothing out clay are simply my fingers. If you gently brush your finger against the surface of the clay, then you can achieve a pretty smooth surface. It even looks a little bit shiny. That shine does go away a bit after you bake your clay. Part of the clay making process that I've been trying to accept is that my clay pieces won't be perfectly smooth because they are handmade, but that is what gives it extra character. When it comes to attaching clay pieces, I'll either rely on the stickiness of the clay itself, especially for smaller features like the face of the ghost or the scarf, but when it comes to larger pieces like the hat and I really want to make sure it, it sticks together, it doesn't come apart, I might use wires like this or I could use a wooden toothpick which I store in this really cute a piece that my friend sent me. Or if I'm in a pinch, I might use paper clips. How to prevent clay from sticking to surfaces. This is where I think that the brand of clay kind of matters. Every brand of clay has a different stickiness level to it. Sometimes when my clay is extra sticky, I've used parchment paper and the clay tends to stick a little bit less to that. Now if you got oven baked polymer clay like me, you're going to need an oven. And it depends on the clay brand, but I tend to mix clay brands, which I'm probably not supposed to do, and I just kind of use the Sculpey standard, which is 275 degrees Fahrenheit at 15 minutes. Now finishing your clay. I know the number one bane of many clay makers' existence is lint, dust. It gets all over your clay. I think the best way to resolve this is to is partially just to accept it, but you definitely have the option of sanding it down later if you need to, or painting over it. And if you want, that can be the end product of your clay piece. Some people like myself like to glaze our pieces somehow, you know, give it that little nice shiny glossy finish. A lot of artists use UV resin, which you'll have to look into a little bit more yourself because the chemicals can be toxic if you're not careful. I myself just use a lot of craft glaze, like Sculpey glaze. It's easy 
easy and it's what works for now. And that's pretty much it. I hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, or if you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Also, if you have any tips, feel free to let me know as well. I'm still constantly growing, so I'm always just trying to figure out a better way to do things. I can't wait to see what you create. Till next time, bye.